Hi everyone, it's Durster here and I want to talk about how to get one of the Group 2 cars around the Red Bull Ring as fast as possible. Today we are using the Lexus and I actually used a variable brake balance throughout the lap because each corner responded differently with different BBs. Now, whilst I've later with more practice just decided that I'm probably going to go with the Honda and I'll explain a little bit more about that later. I have a feeling that the Lexus will be a pretty popular choice, not least because of its tyre management and it also doesn't understeer quite as much as the Nissan. But I think it's actually a fairly even uh, spread across all three cars and I can see all three potentially working. Now I also believe that top bit pole positions are going to be getting into the 1 minute 20. Looking out for 1 minute 20.6 or 7 probably be a top bit pole. Let's take a look at the lap now. I used the front BB just to control the rear stability on the entry into turn 1, which I was having a little bit of a challenge with. It's so important you get turn 1 right because ultimately the exit speed you get can translate into a difference of a tenth or two by the time you reach turn 2. It's really heavy braking now. Getting the timing on the turning and the speed right here is infuriatingly difficult and it's actually a very, very tricky corner to get right. The rest of the circuit, I personally find is a little bit easier in terms of nailing the apexes. One of my favourite corners here, not least because of the exit, I love balancing the swap of the car on the exit here. Here's where I go to a rear BB, because these downhill, non-max braking corners, if you just squeeze the brake pedal, it just helps pull the front of the car in and hug the apex. Coming up to the final sequence of corners now. And this is the bit where we start to get jelly hands. I know I do because we're on a good lap. We've just got to stay cool, light braking, not too heavy, ease it in. A little bit sketchy on entry there. Bam, onto the final straight. Now, this is a pretty solid lap. I could have easily got into the 120s here, but my sector 2 wasn't strong enough. And as you can see, my optimal is a 120.742 in the Lexus. Now, it's it's tricky for me because I feel like there's pros and cons with both cars. The Lexus, of course, is easier on the tyres, can be a little bit more aggressive throughout the race distance. The Honda is tricky for rear tyre management, and I tested both. And I think in qualifying trim, the Honda's going to have the edge. And if you're not really sure on how to balance the car throughout the race to look after the rears, it's probably a safer bet to go with the Lexus or the Nissan. And I personally tested the Honda now. And the reason why I'd rather go for the Honda as opposed to the Lexus is because of that edge in qualifying. Because when you are leading from pole, it's much, much easier to keep people behind you throughout a race distance because of the dirty air. So let's say, you know, P1, P2, you set virtually identical lap times, you're neck and neck in terms of raw lap speed. Now, you could probably race at about 90% look after your tyres a little bit better and you know the guy behind you is going to have to work inf infinitely harder just to get in front or even have an opportunity and eventually his tyres are going to wear before yours and he's going to have to drop back outside of that uh, dirty air zone and so that is why I'd rather go for the Honda and I actually set a slightly better overall race time despite coming from a strategy from behind. There was only three of us racing. We were all very, very, very evenly matched. Our, our qualifying times were within a tenth of each other. And I decided to start on the hards. And ultimately, despite starting on the hards and having to pass them in the final sort of five, six laps, I still got a very strong race time of a 23.36, which was the same is what I did with the Lexus without any kind of impediment, without having to overtake anybody. So that actually says a lot. Now here's where things get interesting. That strategy only worked because I had absolutely nobody else behind me and the guys in front of me only did a one stop. But when you've got a field of 20, if you've got guys doing a one stop, it's a bit like Monza on Saturday. Sure, the race time is faster for a two stop, but if you get tangled up with people, you might not be able to maximize it, especially with dirty air. So there's actually quite a lot to consider here. My gut 
feeling right now is to go with the Honda and go for a two stop assuming we land pole. If we get sort of top five, I would likely start on the mediums, but anything outside of that, I might take a gamble, a start on the hard, pit, and then completely attack. So those are the thoughts I've learned so far about strategy and cars for this come upcoming race on Wednesday. I wish you the best of luck. Let me know in the comments what choice you're going for and what strategy you're going to go for. See you soon.